A very happy new year to all of you and welcome to the Ines and Pat the podcast. I'm very excited and looking forward to a very exciting year up ahead. And my first guest for the year is probably the youngest guest I've ever heard uh had on the show and his name is Joshua Kelly Chetty. So hi Joshua. Hi Nesan and to all the listeners. Thank you very much for having me on your podcast. I'm honored to be your first guest for 2023 and I'm uh, looking forward to having a great conversation with you. Thank you very much. Excellent, excellent. And Joshua, as I mentioned, you you you're very young and uh I'm looking at your your rap sheet here in, in your bio and uh it, it is uh, an extremely stacked deck and I think you've got a very uh a great CV of activity and uh where do we even start? Uh what would I mean if someone met you and it was an elevator pitch, how would you introduce yourself? Um so I think uh, thank you very much for those kind words by the way. Um it's only through God's grace and um people's incredible kindness and support that I've achieved what I've achieved um you know so far. Um I think I'd like to start with um we can start about a little bit about who I am and um um where I was born and stuff. So mm-hmm. um I was born in Durban um and we lived in Durban until I was about 5 and then we moved to Johannesburg for better opportunities as my dad got a promotion. Um I was born with a um physical condition, a physical disability called diplegia, which is a form of um cerebral palsy and uh the reason for that is because I was born very prematurely at um, mm-hmm. 820 grams and at oh 27 my. weeks at 27 weeks Um and so I was um in hospital for about 2 months. I only left hospital on the 21st of December in I mean 21st of September in 99. Um and my journey has been full of ups and downs. Um there's really been um high highs and um low lows. I've had um nothing has ever come easy for me. It's always been about um persevering and trying again and again. Um and I'm just honored to have achieved what I what I have achieved. Um I would say in terms of my um achievements and the message that I want to promote. Um so when I was in matric in 2017, I received um so I was placed first in South Africa for um learners with special educational needs um for my matric results. and um that opened so many doors for me it opened my eyes to um different things that i'm passionate about different things that i might be interested in like for example the media and uh, you know being in front of the camera in some way and uh, really um, expressing myself through the entertainment industry um it really because i had to do um you know radio interviews and uh, interviews yep. for the newspaper and stuff um on mm-hmm. the spot without any preparation i was only informed of um all of this like on the day that everything was happening so uh, i really had to like you know uh i was i was pushed out of my shell in that way but it was it was such a positive experience for me because i think if it ha- if it happened any other way i would have been too shy and too nervous um and so since then it's been a it's been a journey of uh, learning about who i am and you know um coming out of my shell more um, being more comfortable talking to people uh getting over my social anxiety uh you know that oh, i think my i think my condition did contribute to that a lot um i was always very um, self-conscious about how i was viewed um especially if i'm in public etc um mm-hmm. and i would I would um shy away from you know meeting up with friends etc because of because I I understand that when I walk into a room because of my condition and the way I walk um um people's attention is going to be on me and that scared me a lot um but I think in recent years I've I've changed that mindset to something so positive where you know I think to myself if people's attention is going to be on me anyway if people are going to um pay attention to me um whether i uh expect it or not um i want to use it for good i want to use it for um uh, to for raising awareness for um cerebral palsy because there's lots of um information that people don't know um there's lots of um, society doesn't really um uh, understand um what we go through with a physical physical condition not limited to to the condition that i experience um but you know many different conditions as well and even learning learning disabilities i think i think the more and more um awareness that we can raise um the better it would be so yeah that's also one of my um uh, great interests that i hope to um 
sort of furthermore this year. Mm-hmm. So, so Joshua, you touched on something I think very important is like, how did you get over? I mean, apart from the the challenges in doing what you're doing, you know, in in the world and the activity and the industries you're talking about, but I, I'm, I'm yeah. curious about the the mental hurdle itself, like you're saying, of, of getting over your own. Um, you know, a perception of yourself and 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 being self-conscious and that anxiety. So, I mean, yeah. it, so you've had it your whole life. But but when was the turning point? I mean, were there moments where, you know, you like you were saying, you were compelled or pushed forward to to, to uh, move out of your comfort zone and see yourself differently? Yes. Um. So I think really, um, the beginning of 2018 was really a a huge game changer for me. Um, I wouldn't say I was shy in in every environment that I found myself in, but especially if it was people that I didn't know, you know, I would just like sort of sink into the background, um, etc. Mm-hmm. And it is still a work in progress. You know, it's never going to be completely, you know, it's still like uh, that, yeah. that mental challenge of like pushing myself, like, you know, like you can do it, you know. Um, so but i think really that was a big change for me because i realized that um people care about what i have to say um and i realized that i have a message that is so much bigger than my condition than my own anxieties um and i I really have an an aim with my entire life uh that i want to um further uh, and and that is to help people really to um to be a, a friend to people to show people that it's okay regardless of any um challenge that you may experience um, you can achieve your goals and you can make your dreams come true. It just takes some um, perseverance. Um, you've got to have that strong belief in yourself. And really, um, I wouldn't be where I am today without uh, my family's um, unwavering support, um, the support of great friends, uh, you know, really uh, good um connections that I've made over the years who've really been uh, such a source of encouragement to me and motivation they've never uh, made me feel that I'm less that I'm lesser than everyone else because of my condition um yes I do have a physical challenge so I do need more assistance than other people um but that is just something that you know I have to deal with um and I think many people have challenges and um, different things that they must deal with and if we were all just a little more um, compassionate and kind um, and accommodating to them um, they would also be able to achieve their dreams you know even if it's not a physical disability you think that people have their challenges their mental challenges the the stress of life in general so i think with a little more understanding and compassion uh, compassion people can really go uh, so much further than their wildest dreams and so I really hope to promote that as well. Joshua, in, in, in all the, the roles that you currently you know hold as it were or have held, such as the Panache Man of Vela and um, Mr. India, South Africa, um, finalist, et, et cetera, what kind of um, challenges have you faced? I mean, like there's obviously, like you're saying, there's still the perception and the stigma and there's only so much you can do. But uh, I guess someone like yourself entering those kind of arenas is it can be a bit jarring for people, you know, who aren't uh, compassionate and supportive, um, and probably not uh, ill-intentioned. But yeah. um, like, uh, how, how do you deal with that, and and how uh, how often has that occurred? Is it has it been getting better? Um, is the uh, awareness of uh, cerebral palsy and and things improving? Uh, in your opinion, um, I think it great. Um, it really is improving. Um, and one of the 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 amazing things about me taking part in the competition, which I'm so grateful um, to, to to the organizer, um, Mr. Danny Mudia, um, and especially all of the other. Um, uh, my fellow um, contestants, uh, the other gentlemen who've been absolutely amazing in throughout the journey. Um, yes, there's been challenges, but I am incredibly uh, um, honored to be able and blessed to be able to say that um, I, like for me personally, I was surrounded by so much of um, love and support and and just that uh, friendship throughout this entire journey that I completely felt. Um, sort of included and you know understood with regards to my condition um right from the get-go you know from the get-go my main aim was to inspire and motivate other people and really uh, i'm so glad that i was able to do that and as well as the the other gentlemen as well i really uh, i'm glad that i could have inspired them um in some way um in terms of the awareness and whether it's getting better um throughout the journey um 
there was opportunities for me to um, be on radio, to, to have radio interviews and stuff. And I used um, you know, every opportunity that I could to really um, increase awareness for um, cerebral palsy, to talk about my condition um, and you know, um, the experiences that I think um, people with disabilities um, have. But it's not, um, the sad part is that uh, many people don't have a voice. So uh, I really want, I, uh, I was really able to sort of um, be that voice for people and really um, give a little bit of insight about um, cerebral palsy and also um, what more can be done um, to, to, to increase awareness. For example, I have um, been in touch with an organization called um, Together Nest, uh, Together Nest South Africa, and their main aim is to uh, increase awareness to really um, promote more inclusion which i'm also i was so um, honored to be able to bring that to the fore by me being on stage and and participating and have um, you know uh, have the event covered by tv and stuff um, which is really um, i i do hope that it promotes more inclusion of people with disabilities in these spaces where i think previously um, um, there was a societal thing where um, a societal stigma where it's like there's certain spaces um, for people um, that are able-bodied and then there's certain spaces for people that are uh, with disabilities but I think by me um, participating in the Mr. India South Africa 2022 that really was a nice blend of it to show that um, you know um, I could also have been included with everyone else that are um, able-bodied so that is my you know my um, big message And in terms of um, raising awareness, there's definitely um, lots of, um, there's more work to be done. Definitely, Um, it's it's, it's never going to stop. Uh, It's going to, I know it's going to be a constant challenge, but if we can make um, that consistent effort to really um, um, open up um, spaces for people with disabilities, um, overall, I think um, at the end of the day, we would have all made a, an incredibly um, positive impact um, in the lives of people where, you know, you don't ask to be um, disabled or you don't ask to to have a physical challenge and um, perhaps be viewed differently from other people. I know with myself, it's never been a, um, it hasn't, yes, the journey has been um, 90% positive, but there has been lots of low moments as well. You know, um, I've dealt with bullying. I've dealt mm-hmm. with um, children that can be nasty, especially in school. Um, you know, I've dealt with um, people that can be a little inconsiderate and, you know, through no fault of their own. I, I, I wouldn't want to say that people people intentionally uh, want you to be that way. But um, as children, you are, you are sort of um, ignorant in that sense where you don't understand that, you know, um, other people have um, are, are different a and they have yeah. different challenges to, to deal with. Um, so there's been like low, low moments um, and for example when I was um, in school I went to a, a mainstream school from like grade one up until the beginning of grade nine where um, it became physically impossible for me to con- continue in a um, mainstream school anymore because I just couldn't climb any more stairs. Um, there was no accommodations for someone with the disability in the school that I went to. Um, so then I had to, um, you know, really take a break and take care of my health first, of course. I, re- I had to um, focus on my on my muscles and getting back my strength. Um, and after about a, a, a break for two weeks, we started looking for a new school. Um, we, like uh, my, with my parents and I, um, we started like looking at what other options are available um, for someone like me to really um, you know, finish my education and get my matric. Um, and then that's when we found New Hope School in Pretoria, which is a school for people with disabilities. Yes, it's like a, it was a, a far drive from home, um, but I had to do what I had to do in order to um, get my education. Um, mm-hmm. And I think at the end of the day, um, even though I didn't, the decision to move schools wasn't uh, brought brought upon with a positive experience. But at the end of the day, it had such a positive impact on my life because I excelled um, extremely 
well um, in the um, special needs school purely because I didn't have to um, focus on my condition. There was accommodations in place for me to um, not have to worry about how am I going to get from class one to class two or from um, the science lab to the economics class. Um, and I could just focus on my academics and I could use a wheelchair in school if I needed it. Um, there was um, physical um, facilities in place to assist everyone um, if I, I'm thinking about my school right now and there was um, railings throughout the entire school um, on every wall okay, that that's considered yeah it was a railing because at times like I, for, for example with me um, I can walk I am able to walk and stand etc but I can't do it for a very long time and because my balance is um, is off it's not um, where an able-bodied person's balance would be it's um, um, I need that support at times even if I do walk there needs to be something that I can grab onto if I need to um, so because of all those accommodations in place and um, we had smaller classrooms in our um, in my special needs school there was only about a maximum of 11 learners in a class even in matric um, that really helped me to, to excel academically and because of that I was able to um, further my studies whereas if I, um, if I wasn't in that, main, in that special needs school um, and if I didn't win um, the award that I did because of my um, matric results um, I wouldn't have been able to further my studies and uh, uh, pursue tertiary education pursue um, a career in a, in a field I'm greatly interested in which is um, strategic brand communication um, I, I actually graduated last year in May. Um, so I think my point with all of this is that mm -hmm. uh, people need those accommodations in place. Um, and it, it opened my eyes so much to be yeah, in a special needs school. Because before that, I, I really thought that I was the only one with a um, physical disability. I really was the only one in a mainstream school. Um, and I thought that I'm the only one like this. Nobody understands what I'm going through. Um, but when I moved to a special needs school, I saw that there's so many other people who just like me. Um, and not to compare one condition to another, um, but many other people were uh, in a more severe, um, you know, uh, state than I was in with regards to their condition. Um, and that really um, helped me to be so grateful for what I am able to do. Um, and I was really able to be a, a support and encouragement to the other learners as well which is something that I hold very um, dear to me. Um, and so, so yeah, I think all of my experiences thus far have contributed to um, the person that I am. That I am. Um, it's always been where one thing has led to another, that has led to another, and that has, um, you know, one achievement has, has always opened the door for another achievement. Uh, so I do hope to continue that uh, and really to share my story because I think many people don't have um, the opportunities that I was um, blessed to have. Uh, many people don't have a support structure like I have. So uh, it's really important to me to, to create opportunities like that for other people. You know, if I was given something, it's, mm -hmm. I was given certain opportunities for me to advance in my life. Uh, and I feel, yeah, I feel it's my great responsibility and it's something that is extremely important to me to create opportunities for other people. So even with even speaking with you today, you know, I'm always looking mm -hmm. forward to, to to share my story. And so I'm so grateful to you and uh, your platform and your podcast for allowing me to do that today. Um, and, 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 and Joshua, tell me, where did your, your, your love for Bollywood come in, into all of this? Well... <laughs> that's actually really interesting um my parents and my my family have always been huge lovers of of, of bollywood and you know our uh, indian film industry our, our indian culture and uh, that is really um, carried over to me i absolutely love bollywood if i could be in a bollywood movie that would be another dream come true for me so <laughs> so it's something that i'm really uh, really excited about it's, it, it it helps me um de-stress and it really uh it's uh it's it's what i like to do in my downtime certain people like to um, play extreme sports i mm -hmm. love to watch i love to watch <laughs> movies and swim and read you know exactly. well, some would say watching bollywood films is an extreme sport not exactly yes. the shortest uh, form of yes. film. 
That's yeah. Exactly. So, so, so did you, were you into it? Oh, sorry, you were saying your parents, eh? Yes, yes, my parents. So, uh, my parents always lo- have always loved Bollywood, and um, uh, so at home normally, if we're watching a movie or something on on Netflix, we would uh, it would be my parents and I uh, watching a movie or like watching a Bollywood movie, etc. Uh, we would um, we would also like sometimes go to the cinema and watch. Or uh, you know, just the industry as a whole um, fascinates me. I always um, I enjoy, um, for example, something that I'd like to um, do this year is I enjoy watching um, live performances of you know uh, dancing, whether it's Bollywood, um, classical Indian dance, etc. So um, I have uh, I have made some friends in the industry as well, and um, I'm looking forward to maybe joining a a, a dance school, or or you know. Um, supporting the industry in in um, any way that I could and I think uh, there can be a, a connection between um, dancing in many different forms and people with disabilities um, because an idea that popped into my head right now is um, sorry to jump around but uh, an idea that popped into my head right now is you know if we can get people with um, with physical challenges uh, moving and dancing and really um, uh, helping them to be positive in that way uh, it would really be of a great um, source of um, positivity and uh, encouragement to them so uh, maybe that's something that I that I may be able to start if I get in, get in touch with the right people uh, but yeah those are just some of my other interests um, that I think it's just nice to share to uh, show the lighter side of, of me Fantastic, fantastic, and and, and Joshua, in, I mean, in, in closing, where do you see? I mean, again, you're very young. You've got a lot of um, things behind you. Congratulations on completing your uh, strategic uh, brand communications degree. And where do you see yourself in the future? I mean, where, where do you think will be your your space? And uh, what do you hope to inevitably con- contribute? Um, so I think, in terms of um, from a professional standpoint, I would love to. Um, get into the uh, brand communication industry more uh, and really uh, um, you know start working with brands start uh, looking at uh, brand messages and the and the message that's deeper than their um, business operations uh, to really uh, look at that and the and what are they doing for society what are they doing to to change people's mindsets um, I would really love to get into that space as it would also be uh, making use of the um, qualification that I have, you know, um, worked so very hard for. Uh, in terms of my um, other interests that I have, I would love to, um, you know, try out acting maybe. Uh, I would love to uh, try out modeling. Uh, it's all like d- um, different interests that I that I have. Uh, and in terms of, um, you know, how I would like to... Uh, uh, contribute would definitely be in terms of um, uh, raising awareness and uh, creating spaces for people uh, to uh, to make their dreams come true and to and you know even if we don't take it as far as um, making people's dreams come true because um, people have many different dreams in them um, you know that is um, very it, it can be very wide ranging but you know in terms of uh, basic employment for people as well uh, you know it's it's uh, it's such a challenge that we face in our country um, you know finding work so if i can um, make a small contribution to that as well uh, that would really uh, mean a lot to me so that's just some of the stuff that i'm, that I'm interested in you know i i always take each day as it comes and so um, if I if I get an opportunity or I'm always looking for new opportunities um, over and beyond what I uh, may be interested in right now as well. So if an opportunity comes about, um, I'm the type of person that will be like, OK, let me try it. Let me go for it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And then move on to something else. So uh, I definitely can't wait to see what else is in store for me. Um, and, you know, I would really love to um, connect with people more uh, and share my story more, but also give other people an opportunity to, to share their story. So I think that is my main focus for, for this year. 
Uh, Joshua, it's been nothing short of inspirational. Thank you for sharing your story with both myself and the listeners. Looking forward to seeing what 2023 has in store for you. And uh, thank you for your time. Um, hopefully, we'll have you on the show again. Thank you so much. I would love to be on the show again. Thank you very much, Nielsen, and to all your, your listeners. Love to meet you at some point in this year as well. Uh, perhaps we can arrange that. Uh, but thank you very much, and I hope you have a lovely weekend. Thanks, Joshua. Take care. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye.